The contents of the following program are not intended to substitute for the advice of your health care provider, and the producers of this series assume no liability for the use or misuse of the material presented. Creation or evolution? Design or random chance? They say it all began with a big bang. But when we look at the amazing human body, the answer is obvious. The complexity of the design exceeds anything man has ever made. The body could only have been designed by the master designer we read about in the Bible. Join us as we explore the miraculous development of the human baby. Divine Design. Hello, I'm Patty Barnes, Director of the Midwifery Program at Heartland College. Today, we are going to discuss a few New Age practices that have found their way in the arena of childbirth. The term New Age is difficult to define, but perhaps a simple way to look at it is a repackaging of many aspects of spiritualism that trace back through Eastern religions to ancient Babylon and Egypt, but originating with Satan's first lie to Eve. Thou shalt not surely die, thou shalt be as God. Spiritualism is one of the three unclean spirits mentioned in Revelation 16 that go out and deceive the whole world in these last days. In Volume 5 of the Testimonies for the Church, page 443, we find this counsel. There are many ways of practicing the healing art, but there is only one way that heaven approves. God's remedies are the simple agencies of nature that will not tax or debilitate the system through their powerful properties. Pure air and water, cleanliness, a proper diet, purity of life, and a firm trust in God are remedies for the want of which thousands are dying. Indeed, there are many ways of practicing the healing arts, and New Age techniques are among them. First, let's look at the subject of hypnobirthing. Hypnosis have been gaining in popularity over the past few decades across a wide variety of fields. We find it in business, athletics, psychology, medicine, dentistry, religious worship, and now childbirth. Some assume that there is nothing more than a placebo effect when hypnosis is used in the field of medicine. Others seem convinced that healing and pain relief can be greatly aided by the use of hypnosis. Just what is behind these claims? And is there any truth to them? More importantly, is there any danger in the use of hypnosis? To answer these questions, we must consider its history and who has promoted it. We find that many Eastern religions have practiced it for centuries, including Hindus, Buddhists, witch doctors, yogis, spirit mediums, and so on. That should immediately raise some red flags for Christians. Rather, the practice is self-hypnosis or one person hypnotizing another. The result is nearly the same, a trance-like state in which the subject is left vulnerable to the impressions of another person or even demonic spirits. First, the mind is emptied often by the use of a mantra or repetition of a word or a phrase over and over until the mind drifts off into a somewhat altered state of consciousness. Eastern religious practices use this method to come in contact with their inner voice or the God residing within. This is based on pantheism and is foreign to biblical meditation, which fills the mind as opposed to empty in it. 
The Bible way is to meditate on verses of Scripture, not in vain repetition, but in searching out its meaning or claiming its promise. Jesus warned against the occult and apostate method when He said in Matthew 6, verse 7, But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. There is a definite difference between trusting God to help you through labor by prayer and praise claiming His promises over against the hypnotic method of altering your state of mind and convincing yourself that you can do great things, including escaping labor pains. I once had a client who was convinced that she did not have to suffer contractions, believing that it was not God's will for Christians to suffer pain. The result was she was delaying the natural process of contractions that would push the baby down through the birth canal. There is power in the mind, but in this case, it was only providing an obstacle when she finally consented to work in harmony with her body, the contractions did their appointed work and the baby was delivered. While it is true that believers in Christ are redeemed from the curse of the law, that doesn't exempt us from all the consequences of sin, which includes pain. When Jesus rescues us and places us on that sea of glass, He will wipe away all tears and there will be no more pain and sorrow. In the meantime, we must endure suffering and hardship through His grace, including labor pains. The argument is often raised that if we use Christian-based hypnosis, there's no problem. That's an oxymoron, as hypnosis is not Christian, but pagan. The only trances recorded in Scripture for believers were those induced directly by the Holy Spirit, not by self-hypnosis or another person. An empty mind is a vacuum that demonic forces are more than ready to occupy. While there are some that would scoff at this idea, it is nevertheless a real threat. Consider this passage from the book, The Great Controversy, page 556. The claim that men can hold intercourse with evil spirits is regarded as a fable of the Dark Ages. But spiritualism, which numbers its converts by hundreds of thousands, yea, by millions, which has made its way into scientific circles, which has invaded churches, and has found favor in legislative bodies, and even in the courts of kings. This mammoth deception is but a revival in a new disguise of the witchcraft condemned and prohibited of old. Those who argue that hypnosis works should consider this. It is the masterpiece of satanic deception. It wouldn't be much of a deception if it didn't work. It is actually because it does seem to work that it makes it appealing and therefore more dangerous. In Leviticus 19 verse 26, God prohibited the use of enchantment. The Hebrew word translated enchantment is nakash, and it means to hiss, whisper a spell. This spell could very well be the same as the trance of hypnosis. It may also be what Paul warned about in 2 Timothy 3.13. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. The Greek word for seducers is goes, meaning a wizard as muttering spells. Sister White supports this interpretation in Volume 2 of Mind, Character, and Personality, page 714. Innocent though it may appear, this mind cure, if exercised upon patients, will in its development be for their destruction, not their restoration. 2 Timothy 3 describes persons who accept error, such as one mind exercising complete control over another mind. God forbids any such thing. The mind cure is one of Satan's greatest sciences, and it is important that our physicians see clearly the real character of this science, for through it great temptations will come to them. This science must not be allowed a particle of standing room in our sanitariums. Another New Age practice that has really gained popularity in recent years is called placentophagy, consuming of the placenta. 
we will readily admit that there are vitamins and minerals in abundance in the placenta, but to eat human tissue is nothing less than cannibalism. The placenta has served the purpose of several organs for growing fetus, including the lungs, the kidneys, and the liver. We shouldn't be eating such tissue from any animal, much less from a human body. For a time, mothers were being encouraged to cook the placenta, but now the practice of encapsulating the placenta has become popular. Let it not be forgotten that while there may be some nutritional value, there may also be grave dangers in this practice. The placenta acted as a filter and a barrier between the mother and the baby, blocking many harmful substances. It also contains blood and waste products that should not be ingested. It is time that Christians exercise their God-given sense. Just because some animals might eat the placenta is not any reason for us to do that. Many animals eat almost anything, included feces. A dog will consume his own vomit. And contrary to the theory of evolution, we are not mere animals, but created in the image of God. There is one instance in the Bible where it speaks of women eating their placentas. It is found in the famous chapter of Blessings and Cursings, Deuteronomy 28. We find the following curses for the rebellious people of God in verse 56 and 57. While their city is under siege and they are starving to death. The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness, her eyes shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom, and toward her son, and toward her daughter, and toward her young one that cometh out between her feet, and toward her children which she shall bear. For she shall eat them for want of all things secretly in the siege and straightness, wherewith thine enemy shall distress thee in thy gates. The Hebrew word for young one is translated afterbirth in the margin. The New King James translates it placenta. The delicate women is reduced to cannibalism. The last New Age practice we will consider is that of touch therapy based on ancient Eastern practices. Actually, there's usually no touching at all. The practitioner holds his or her hands inches away from the body of a patient, moving them around to detect the energy fields, sometimes called the key or the vital force, where energy is thought to be out of balance. The hands are moved to redistribute the energies. Where there is excess energy or bad energy, the practitioner may place one hand, palm down toward the ground, to channel it away from the patient's body. Some believe they can transfer some of their own energy into the patients. Some spiritualistic physicians and midwives use similar techniques on women in labor. Ellen White often spoke of vital force, but never in a spiritualistic way. She simply was referring to vitality and strength of a person, not the mystical qi or yin and yang of ancient Chinese culture. Let us stand strong in God's Word, like Daniel and his three friends, who were found healthier and ten times wiser than all the magicians, astrologers, and sorcerers in all of Babylon. We read in Daniel 12, 3, And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Join us next time for more of Divine Design.